Hello and welcome to episode 16 of the Tash Talks live show and am I freaking excited to be here. We had some time off and I always say that my commitment is to show up here every single Friday for you to give value for you guys to message, voice note, email your questions in um, and then I will do my best to answer them as honestly and as frankly as as, as, as only I know how to do. <laughs> now, if you're on live, please do in the chat box, say hello. So I, of course, can see your beautiful names pop up. And if you are listening on the replay, then of course put hashtag replay because I want to be hearing from you. Now, let me just give you a kind of a quick overview of what's going on right now in my life. So tomorrow, 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 we are off to Spain. I little sneak preview for you guys. I actually surprised my husband. Um, a little trip away. So he's mega excited. So mum and dad, we're on the loose. We're on our way to Spain in the morning. And I don't know about you, but I am, I love a morning flight. My husband probably not so much. <laughs> so our flight tomorrow is at 5.25 and I'm like, bring it. I'm so excited. Um, so yes, yeah, so in preparation um, of that amazing trip away, which was incredible, but another time I'll actually share with you how I surprised him with that, which was just every year I feel like I outdo myself one year actually I'll share this with you now one year I surprised him um to a holiday and I thought this would be a really good idea to <laughs> I emailed his um his assistant and marked off his diary so no no meetings and stuff could be booked I had packed his whole case and I do all, all the packing anyway but packed all his okay his old his case everything completely surprised so our flight I think was at like eight o'clock in the morning 2 a.m. I wake him up. Mima, Mima. He wakes up in a fright. Go, oh my God, what's the matter? I'm like, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I've got some really exciting news. And he's, he honestly, it didn't go down well. He didn't take it the way I thought. I thought he was going to be over the moon. Instead, he thought I was waking him up to give him really bad news. So that was a, uh -uh, that was an epic fail. <laughs> Once he got awake and he was on the way to the airport, he was really excited. I promise. Never, note to self, never to do that again. Whereas this time, I actually printed out a poster and said, surprise, I'm taking you to Wales for the week. And he was over the moon. And then we were out for dinner, actually, and we cheers to that. And then I went, here we go. And I gave him another piece of paper and it said, only joking, pack your passport. We are off to Spain. And he was so, so excited. So, yeah, I love to freshen things up. I like to do things a bit different. I love to... Uh... <laughs> Brighten my husband. I love surprises, you see. I love, freaking love surprises. Uh, more so, like, I love getting surprises. I never quite understand, actually. My two best friends, two of my best friends hate surprises. Like, one of my best friends always says to me, Tash, just tell me the surprise and I'll act surprised. And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> You're defeating the purpose right now. You're not meant to know the surprise. And my other best friend, Pop, she hates surprises. He's like, no, 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 I just, I'd rather know. I like to plan. See me, I love a surprise. Rock up at my house, say, get ready. We're going out. I'm over the moon with that. So yeah, um, so I love giving surprises. And I like being surprised. Uh, okay, what else is going on? So exciting things. I have got, you probably um, heard me say this on my Insta story. I've got two spots that have opened up for my one-on-one. -on -one. This is to work with me three months. It's your my closest proximity container to literally be in my world for three months to really kind of master the inner game and master the strategy. So if that's you and you are interested in finding out some more information and send me a DM. So that's one thing. Second thing is um, I'm now figuring out the rest, spending the rest of my day figuring out how I want this month to look like and what I'm launching. I know what I'm launching anyway. Shall I tell you? Do you want to know? Or do you not want to know? Tell me. <laughs> tell me, tell me, tell me. Okay, so let's kick off and get into our questions. Right. There's some juicy ones. I know I say this every week, but guys, you do put in some really juicy questions. Right. Question one. What is the common theme that you see in all successful people that you meet and that you are friends with? What is the common theme that I see in all successful people that I meet and that I'm friends with? Okay. The one thing that instantly just comes out at me is their beliefs. The, 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 the most successful people that I meet, whether I'm on their podcasts or I'm at events with them or my biz besties, right? The one thing 
that's in common with every single one of them. Because let me say this, all their strategy, if I think about my three big biz besties, how they have reached the level of success in their business that they've all done, they've all done very different strategies. One, it, like solely ads. The other one, hardly done any, ad. actually the other two, hardly done any, any ads. It's more organic. Um, one is, was very strategy based and now has moved into a kind of more spiritual. You get my point. The point is the strategy isn't the common thing where I go, oh, it's that. That's what making everyone be successful. It's the unshakable belief they have in themselves. That's what it is. The reason why people are wealthy is because they have this beautiful acceptance and understanding of the energy of money. Like they truly and utterly believe that they are so supported and so backed and like it's energy and it all just gets to come. That's definitely one thing. Also, what I've noticed is that they're kind of putting themselves first. And I mean this in like the nicest way possible, but being honest, they put themselves first before anything else. What do I mean by that? I mean, they're working on themselves before they're serving their clients. They're investing in themselves and in their business before they're seeing a return, before they're seeing the results. So can you see that? Like they are, and I think they come hand in hand, actually. They are so they're very intertwined. They're so obsessed with their beliefs and their unshakable belief in like, it gets to work because it does. Like I'm successful because I am, like it was always going to work out. And that, that marries up with the putting themselves first, doing the work on themselves before they serve their clients, you know, actually shining the light on themselves to work on those limited beliefs that are coming up or those triggers that are coming up. They're all honestly continuously always working on themselves and I think I believe that is what creates success because if it was strategy and if strategy was the reason why everyone is successful well firstly there wouldn't be an abundance of different strategies you know there'll be 10 ways to hit YouTube and go viral um there'll be people selling how to make your first seven figures with an online course, how to just focus on one-on-one -on -one coaching, how to sell out your group programs using Facebook's, uh, Facebook um, ads, using organic, how to use your Facebook groups to sell out your programs. Like there are so many different strategies, which is incredible. But if that was the case, then everyone would be successful. Everyone would be wealthy. Everyone would be at like the top 1% and they're not. So where's the variable? It's the inner work, isn't it? It's the freaking inner work. <laughs> How do you make your content so val so valuable and enjoyable? I always love seeing your stories. Okay, so it's confession time. I actually set up notifications so I see you're posting your stories first. Thank you. Everybody should do this. You literally just go to the dots, click on and set alerts. So then you get the notifications. I totally done this with my coach. How do you think, how do you think of all the different things to say every day? Great question. Thank you for being my number one fan. Firstly, love that. So much love for that. Secondly, I don't. My message of what I am saying every single day, like the fundamentals are the same. I talk about the same things just in different formats. I share different stories and I add in a Tash flavor. That is the hack of how you be successful, how you create different content every day. Also, just want to add to that, that I actually really enjoy social media. And I think this is really important to put out there. I never used to. I used to find it as a chore. I used to be like, oh my goodness, I've got to show up today. I've got to do this today. And I'm so unapologetically myself. I don't wait for this before I show up. And if you follow me on Instagram, you will know. Hair scuffed up, no makeup. I might be, sometimes I'm in gym care. Sometimes I'm looking bougie and I'm looking fabulous. And sometimes I'm not. There's a hair in the bun. Let's get shit done. Sometimes I'm in mum mode. Sometimes I'm putting the washing out, right? It's real life. The point is people buy into my vibe of who I am. If I was just going to wait until every day I was perfect and I had the perfect setting and the hair was perfect and the outfit was perfect, I'd never show up online. It, you know, it would be only really then on Fridays when I'd done it or Mondays when I decided to do my hair. Rather than actually, I'm here to serve a purpose. I'm here to create valuable content that I want people to scroll through. I want them to immerse themselves into my Instagram feed and just love it and learn so much. So in answer to your question, I, I'm talking about the same things, right? And this is really important. If you are one day talking about this and, and this and then that, and then you swap it and you know that, th th where's the um, 
your audience isn't going to feel that it's well they're not going to feel like it's something that they're used to you talking about if I randomly start to just create content about dogs now my audience are going to be like what the action happened what now she's doing interior designing and now she wants to do this like it's it it's not um congruent that's the word I'm looking for so what does I have topics that I talk about so it'll be the unconscious mind I talk about selling I talk about social media. I talk about um, how the importance of mindset. I talk about um, so sales, social media, um, and and self mastery. Like they're the kind of foundations of what I talk about. And then I will share different stories. I will share different examples. I will share it in different formats, and add in the Tash flavor. So that, I, 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 and I think this is just it proves my point that you can be talking about the same things over and over again. It doesn't feel boring. Okay. What are some of the toughest and challenging things in business? Oh, wow. How long do you have? (laughs) Some of the toughest and challenging things in business will definitely are making hard decisions. As the CEO, as a person, I'm so led by emotions. If somebody's crying, I'm crying. If I'm watching Nemo, you know, the beginning part of Nemo where the family gets eaten by the shark, I'm bawling my eyes out, right? So I'm very attached to my emotions. Um, I'm so empathetic when, when, I, when I see something and hear something, I'm feeling something. So for me, what's really challenging where I have to step into the masculine CEO role, as in I need to make decisions as a business owner, because that's important. We're so led, we're, I'm truly led by my intuition and my gut and my soul. But sometimes we've got to make these hard freaking decisions and they're challenging. I'm not going to pretend they're easy because they're not. Um, so that's definitely one. Being consistent. You know, sometimes that is challenging. You know, sometimes life shows up. Sometimes, you know, things can get in the way. So being consistent in all areas of my life, I think is definitely challenging. Sometimes I feel like I'm nailing this side of life. And then sometimes I feel like I'm not nailing this side of it. And I think that's perspective. I think if someone else was to give me their perspective on my life, they might be like, oh my God, you're nailing all the time. And I'm not because I'm human and I may think differently. So I think definitely being consistent is one. I'll tell you another thing that I, that sometimes I, I can find quite challenging is speaking my truth because some of the things that I believe and that I speak about are not maybe the common belief. So if I'm talking about soul and so many people are so conditioned that you've got to hustle and you've got to work and it's got to you know you've got to have sacrifices and it's got to feel like this in order for you to create this wealth sometimes you can feel like you're going up against a brick wall with somebody when you just want to speak your truth and go actually that like I want to show you a different way I want to show you the importance of working on your inner self before you even think about strategy so sometimes that's quite challenging because it can be quite the noisiness is quite loud out there you know, the do this and like sacrifice this and spend all of this and all of this can just be so much and it takes it away from the heart and the soul, I suppose, of business. So that's definitely one. And I, I tell you another one, I'm gonna be totally honest as per here, is what I feel actually gets me emotional when I think about it. What I find one of the hardest things ever <clears throat> is caring too much. I find that really hard. I really truly and utterly and fucking care I really do I care for my clients I care for my audience I care for you guys I care so much and sometimes that's really challenging to navigate through because you can care and you can want something so much and sometimes it's more than what that actual person wants you know I care when when I get approached you know someone sends me a dm wanting to you know come and work with me and for whatever reason that they don't, I'm like, oh, I saw such potential there. I was so excited to, you know, work together one-on-one and for whatever reason, it, it didn't happen. Sometimes I find that quite hard. Uh, and sometimes I've got to navigate through the frustration through that because you can't want something more than somebody else. It, it's not going to work. Like you can't be in a relationship and I'm like, Michael, I really want this to work. And I just love you so much. And come on, then we can see the potential and how much we can do and have and be together. And he's like... Yeah, I'm just I'm just not feeling it. Like it's not gonna work. So 
sometimes I find that I find that challenging caring so much. And sometimes what's really interesting is when I see and I, I know of other people in the industry that definitely don't care as much and 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 yet seem to just navigate through life like and without that care. So I find that quite hard sometimes. I'm like, I care so much, <laughs> sometimes too much. But I wouldn't want to change that because that's me. And I feel like in business, it is you, isn't it? So I don't want to change and be this hard shelled coach that doesn't care and doesn't let off emotions and you must stick to the boundaries. And, you know, I have boundaries in place. But I think it's also I care to care and to love and to. Can you care too much? Possibly. It's an interesting one for debate. What do you guys think? Do you think that you can care too much in your business? Do you think you can care too much for your clients? Do you think you can care too much? Like what's interesting is I don't care too much about what other people think of me. That I don't. Like you're going to get haters. You're going to get trolls. There's people, I say this all the time, that follow me on Instagram, literally probably just follow me to want to see me fail. That's cool. That's your energy you're wasting, not mine. So I don't really give two shits about those types of things, what people think of me. Um, I care more so for, for you. The fact you're, you're listening to this, you're watching this, like I, I care for you. And I, can you care too much then when it comes to a place of love? I don't think you can. I believe you can't. What do you think some people, why do you think some people do not make their business a success? Great question. Why do I think some people don't make their business a success? Fear. The old bullshit narrative stories that are going round and round habitually, just, just repeating the same crap over and over again. They're scared to uh, be judged. They're scared to invest. They're scared what if it doesn't work out. They're scared that what happens if they trip over and the whole of Instagram see. They're scared to get it wrong. They're scared to actually get paid. They're scared to actually be successful. Like there's so much fear there that stops them. And I think doing it alone, like being an entrepreneur, you've got to think about this. For all you guys watching, listening to this, I don't physically see you. So right now, if you were to like, if there was another camera here, would just be seeing me sitting in my office, talking to a screen, like that is it. And when you're alone with your business, when you're alone with your thoughts, when you're alone with your dreams, when you're alone with your struggles, when you're alone with your limitations and your triggers and everything that comes in being an entrepreneur, it can be lonely. And that is why I think so many people then don't become the, at the level of success they desire because they're so used to it being that way that they're not opening up to seeing the possibilities and, and that you don't have to do this alone. And that's why we have coaches and mentors. And that is why we get ourselves into group programs to be surrounded by other like-minded women and create biz besties. That's why we do it right? Because, and I wouldn't want it any other way. And that's why I create containers like my tribe membership. That's why I have my group programs at Conscious Coach. That is why I create my new group program with the monthly calls, you know, shift the shit and stack the satisfaction to enable you to have that level of commitment, consistency, community, coaching, content, right? It enables you to have that. And that's really important for me to lead with that because I know how lonely this can be. And, and, you know, and people can, I wouldn't want it any other way, by the way. I am actually very much an introvert. So I love my own time, but I feel like that helps me navigate through this. But even with that being said, I still love, like uh, we meet, you know, pregnancies and stuff. It hasn't happened so much, but we normally meet every single month we were meeting. Now it's probably every second month. That is a need. That is a must. That is a desire on my heart. Like I'm meeting my biz besties, right? We have a WhatsApp chat that gets blown up. The good, the bad, the ugly, the sad, the motherhood, the business, the money, the relationships, the energy, like, and everything else in between. <laughs> it's like a rant station sometimes. I don't know what I would do without my biz besties. I really don't. So I've gone off on a complete tangent here, but yes, fear and doing it alone because your mind will be, oh, it's giving me shivers. Tasha is speaking her truth. Your fear, like your mind will be your biggest supporter or it will be your worst critic. It will 
beep you up like come on yeah you freaking got this yes you're unstoppable you're unshakable look it's working it's working it's working and it'll also be your failing your crap this isn't working you can't do this you're not good enough you're not smart enough you're articulate enough look you didn't make x amount of money look you've been doing this and it hasn't been working like your mind will also do that for you so i think you really like that needs to be a focus because the i think you know what would be really interesting is actually Maybe I might do this. I might get somebody on on live that hasn't become successful in their business if they feel open to sharing that. And I'd love to know why. Why? There we go. That is just giving me a download of when I do my podcast, I'm going to get somebody on. I'm going to speak honestly and truthfully of why it didn't work out for them. Boom. Thank you very much for that great question. <laughs> Oh my goodness. You're not even going to know what the next question is. When is your podcast coming out? Oh, I love you guys very, very, very soon. And I know I've been saying this, but it's, it's literally on the edge and there's so much content. There's so much stuff I want to talk about. Like, this is me. This is my jam. I love, love, love talking. I love answering your question. I am fascinated with humans. I love asking questions and finding out about them. What I'm really good at, actually, I'm just going to go off on a riff here. In, in We were talking about this, me and my um, my sisters, and we were talking about how some people are feel so, so confident and comfortable constantly talking about themselves. I am not that person. And not because I'm not confident talking about myself. I absolutely am. I mean, who's not? Because it's the one thing you can't get wrong. Like you're talking from you. But what I mean about, let's say you're me and you are in a chat. And have you ever been in that conversation where, someone is just constantly talking about themselves, like they're not even coming up for air to even ask you, how are you? And did that affect you? And have, what have you been doing lately? Or how's your son? Or whatever may be the question. They're just so about themselves. And we were talking about this as sisters and we were like, we're just so not like that. Like if anything, in conversations, I love to hear about the other person, you know? And if someone says, oh my goodness, I saw that the business is going really well. I'm like, great. Yeah, it's going fantastic. I'm like, I love serving my clients. And then what I'll do is I'll then put the focus back on them. I'm, I'm, I just, I really love to, I'm fascinated with people. I love hearing their story. And maybe because in my job, I speak so much about like myself and my story and my journey and my life that I love to, I find other people really fascinating. So I feel like the podcast is freaking perfect for me that I'm going to get people on as well as do my own ones to talk about their life, to inspire you. Like I want to create a platform where very much like Tash talks in regards to nothing is off limits. Like I don't want anyone to come on a podcast and go, don't really want to talk about that. I'm like, oh, but that's what, that's what my audience want to hear. I want to ask the questions no one else is asking. I want to ask about money, the taboo subject that no one wants to talk about. I want to ask, tell me about that failure. Tell me how that failure of that launch made you feel. Like I want these things to be open about. We need to talk about it. We can't all just highlight the most incredible things about entrepreneurship because we know this, but we also need to talk about the realness of it. Um, so yes, in answer to your question, the podcast is coming out very soon. All will be revealed. It, we're just, yeah, it's coming. Okay. <laughs> what is the one thing that you are truly grateful for right now? Oh, okay. The one thing that I am truly grateful for right this minute is RRT, the modality, which is rapid resolution therapy. Why? Because it right now it is helping regulate my nervous system to deal with some bad news that we've just received in my personal life. So right now I am extremely grateful that I get to tap into the resource of RRT, which is helping me regulate my nervous system right now, which wants to be completely spiked with the news that we just got. So yeah, there's some realness for you. Um, can you give us an insight into some of the thoughts that go through your mind? Yes. Okay. So if I, if, I, if, a, if a negative thought comes up into my mind, some of the things that I say are, Tash, it's all working out. Like I freaking believe in you, that like you didn't come this far to come this far. Like it's stacking up, stacking up, it's stacking up. Look, it's stacking up, it's stacking up. It's a game. It's my game. And I always win my game. Like it, I will never fail. 
I will keep going and going and going. Come on, Tash, stack it up. You know, your current reality is constantly becoming your dream reality. Like it gets to be better and better. Like I'm so freaking lucky. I am so grateful. And then I may, may list some things that I'm grateful for. Wow, that worked. Oh my goodness. That was amazing. Oh my goodness. I absolutely smashed today. Oh my goodness. I love the fact that I could just have awareness of that thought. And then I was able to shift it. Boom. Smashing it. Smashed it. See, that's working and that's working and that's working. My goodness. That feels so good. Wow. I was able to shift through that so quickly. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh my goodness. I've just put out two spots there for two people to work one-on-one with me and I've already got one gone and I've already just sold two of them. And oh my God, that feels so easy and so flowy. And these are the most unicorn clients that are coming into my world. But that is what I convince myself with. So of course I get negative thoughts, but I do not stay there. I do not stay there. I'm continuously shifting through and moving through because it's really easy to stay the victim. Let's be fair. It's really freaking easy to stay the victim of your life of your thoughts, of everything that's not working out. That's really easy to stay in that narrative. We can all do that. But can we all switch the narrative to what it is working, looking for solutions, staying in that growth mindset? Can we all do that? Because that is what's necessary. That is what's required in order for you to create that dream life, that success. Like I didn't create all of this because I sat in my negative thoughts and my pity party. That is for freaking sure. I saw the, uh, your story the other day talking about your client having 20K cash months. Can you explain the difference between cash and profit? Absolutely. Okay. I actually got lots of these questions in my DMs the other day about this. So I'm like, wow, this is okay. And this is what's really great about content. Sometimes you, you, you um, share a story and then your audience will give you feedback. And then that you can go and create content on this now. Then I'm like, oh, might go and create a reel about this. So let me answer this question. So the difference between cash and sales. Sales will be what you made that month, including payment plans. Cash is cash in the bank. So every month I have two Excel docs that I do. One is um, sales and one is cash in the bank. Give me, I'll give you an example. If I make £30,000 this month and £20,000 of that is cash because they were the paying falls, I have £20,000 in the account. The other £10,000 are in payment plans. So they are sales because I haven't received that cash yet because they're on payment plans for whichever length they're on. So that's the difference between cash in the bank and actual sales. So what's really interesting when you see on social media, when people say, you know, 10K a month, which is, which is incredible, was that sales or was that cash in the bank? When you look at it of an overview of the year, it doesn't matter. If someone pays the payment plan or someone pays cash in full, like it doesn't matter. But it's just very important that as a CEO, you're aware of that. So that's cash versus sales. Now what I want to teach you about is revenue versus profit. These are two very different things. So let's use the example of £10,000 for the month. That was the revenue. Now, if your expenses in your business are £3,000, that means that you made 7000 profit, right? And then you need to take the tax and the VAT out of that. So whatever's kind of left after that. So that's a great example of what I want you to look at is when you, you know, whatever the number is, you made £10,000, I want you to take your expenses out, your tax and your VAT, and then what you are left with, that is your profit. So let's say you had done, I remember when I'd done, um, let's say when I done the 60k launch, I spent 9,000 something, let's just call it 10k, 10k on ads. When well, 50,000 of that was left after the expenses of ads, then obviously I take tax that out of that, my expenses, and then what's left. So I hope that's clear with you then what the difference is between revenue and profit and what's the difference between cash and sales. Let me know in the chat box if that was clear and that helps you understand your numbers because I don't care if you're someone that's like oh I'm too spiritual to care about my numbers or it's all about intuition the numbers don't mean anything absolutely I'm totally in that in that that bag too but you are the CEO of your business you need to know your numbers you need and I used to for sure be that person that would just oh it doesn't even matter I just won't bother filling out the form I just won't bother filling out the excel doc But then I am hiding myself away from the energy of money. There's something that I'm fearful of. There's something I'm scared of. And that isn't going to welcome in new wealth and new different levels of income to come in if I'm so scared to actually look at my numbers. So be the boss, be the CEO and own your numbers. The difference is, is making it mean something. Oh, 
I made 50K, but actually cash in the bank was only 10K because 40,000 of that was payment plans. Like, and why are you making it mean something? What if you were to just see it as data, just see it as the facts and then leave the meaning and the attachment alone? Okay, so last question. How do you keep going when you are not seeing results? Da, da, da. This is like the golden question. If I was to get a million no, a pound every time someone asked me this, I'd be a multi, 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 multi millionaire. How do you keep going when you are not seeing results? Well, I think that you need to create a reframe here. So I look for results. I look for solutions. I don't want to look at the problems. I don't want to stay in a fixed mindset because if I'm looking for what's not working, this isn't working, this isn't working, this isn't working. I'm focusing my attention and my energy is flowing to more things that are not working. Instead, I want to create and cultivate that energy and put it into what is working. So you can have a look at it from a practical point of view. Okay, if you think this type of strategy isn't working, where's the evidence of why it's not working? You know, is it working? It just hasn't you haven't really kind of been doing it long enough. Is it not working? Do we need to tweak that strategy? Maybe it's we need to look and focus on the messaging. Maybe we need to look at the angle. Maybe we need to switch things up. Like there's different solutions to that. We don't sit in it. It's not working. So that's it. Over. Amen to that. We look at, okay, what actually is working? And then what I do is I focus my attention on that. What actually is working? That's working. That's working. That's working. That makes me feel good. And I'm going to be totally honest with you here. I am so freakingly obsessed with my mission, with my business. My business was my first baby, okay? And then I had many more after that with humans and doggies and ducks. But it's, I'm obsessed with changing the way business is done, changing my clients' lives, changing industry and getting more wealth into women's hands. So regulating nervous systems and uh, shifting those subconscious beliefs like I am so freaking obsessed with this that I, I can't stop I can't stop so when I'm not seeing results I still don't stop because I'm a big believer in I'm stacking up as long as I'm one percent better today than I was yesterday then I'm, then I'm on the right track and no one and I mean no one no one can outdrive me no one can outpassion me and no one can outlove me if that either are they even words I don't know and I don't care but no one can because I'm so driven I'm so passionate and I'm so in love with what I do so even when there are challenging moments times periods even when you want to give up and chuck your laptop out the window even when you've got to navigate through hard hard decisions even when you've got to invest you know energy and money that you may not have right there right even through all of those things my drive and my passion and my love will always keep going so it's got to work out like it, it, it just has to like this is my game I get to play it I get to win and I constantly look at do you remember Tash when you first started your business and you didn't think it was going to work out and you kept going you didn't think you could get to six figures you didn't think that you could leave modeling you didn't think that you could shift through your limiting beliefs you didn't think that you could be off morphine you didn't think that you'd be able to get over your ex you didn't think that you'd be able to get on the property ladder you didn't think that you could have an amazing beautiful relationship with someone that you're obsessed with and they're obsessed with you and you're so in love and so happy and you have the greatest of all areas in your life like you didn't think this yet you still continued to go. You still continued, Tash, even when it was hard, even when the clients were saying no, even when there was no money in the bank, you still freaking continued. So I will still keep continuing. I'm not doing this just so I make X amount of money. I'm not just doing this just for this particular lifestyle. I'm not just doing this because one client and two clients and three clients sign up and they validate me. I'm not just doing this because of the car I drive or the house I have. Like, take all of that away. I'm doing this because this is my mission. It's my soul. It's my purpose. I was born to do this. This is why the dancing, the acting, the singing, the modeling, all of it never worked out. You know, I believe God gave me the chronic back pain to be able to build my tenacity and my strength and, and literally physically take me out of these scenarios that I thought were my dreams. Like I truly and utterly believe that. I believe that I was born to do this. I was put on this world with this mission on my heart. So surely when times are hard and times are challenging, and I, I look to God and source and universe and go, surely I don't stop now. Surely all of this that I've gone through wasn't to just stop now. However hard it gets, how much I've got to navigate, there's always something else. 
And last year, through everything I've been through, if I hadn't have gone through that, it, I wouldn't have been able to find the, the modality of RT, which completely changed my life and my clients' lives. I wouldn't have downloaded Conscious Coach. I wouldn't be navigating and getting my clients amazing results without the attachment and the validation of what those, that money means. Like, I wouldn't be here now. So I think I just have such a love for what it is that I do and a purpose that I continuously say to myself, I've got to keep going. I want to keep going. There's more people to serve. There's more people to transformations to create. Like just because, you know, you may not be getting that validation, whatever it is that you're seeking through right now, doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Just because you're not living your dream life right now doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And it's that tenacity. It's, you know, when people say, you know, what does an entrepreneur need? And I'm like, I remember asking myself this, this constant question of, you know, what, what's that thing? What's the source? What's the magic of an entrepreneur? What makes it successful? And I remember when I was in the industry and I'd be like, why do some singers make it big time and, and some people don't? Some really talented, freaking amazing singers don't make it big time. And I truly believe there's, there's the, excuse the pun, but like there's the show, TV show, The X Factor, there's something. And when it comes down to entrepreneurship, you need that something. You need that buzz, that hunger, the tenacity, the passion, the drive. It can't all just be to make money. It can't all be to just drive the car that you've got. It can't be just to have the validation of, oh, I won this award or the accolades or, oh, my goodness, I sell out every single program or I have thousands and thousands. Like, it's not just that. Like, that is all incredible because of the impact you're creating. But it's got to be more because it, all of those things are not enough when the shit hits the fan. It's not enough when your nervous system's been spiked. It's not enough when you're not seeing the, the results or the validation or the money or the clients or the success. Like, that isn't enough that's going to keep you going. So you, it, it needs that extra factor that va -va -vum, that that zest it needs that spiciness of that hunger that drive it's the hunger and the drive that will keep you going will have that consistency will it's the love of what I do that gets me out of bed every single day that's the honest truth wow that was a riff so I hope that freaking answered your freaking question <laughs> um and that is how I keep going even though I don't see results <laughs> well that was a that was a joyful one wasn't it that was epic oh my goodness like guys I just love this I love 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 this I love spending my Friday mornings with you I hope that you have got so much from this I hope you feel my passion I hope you feel the spice the va -va boom the zest like I hope that you're like yeah and you need to know this, you will not create the life, the business, the, the dreams, if you don't take the freaking action. You can listen to this, feel inspired, and then be like, yeah, I love to touch talks, really inspires me, but then you go and do nothing. You're like, yeah, I really want to invest into myself. I really want to work with Tasha. I really want to join Conscious Coach. Or I really want to join the tribe. And then you don't. Nothing will change if nothing changes. And I'm going to be here and say this honestly from my heart, even if it's not me that you invest in. And I know many coaches won't say that. Like, just because it may not be me, it might be somebody else that you need to go and work with. But don't sit on your dreams and don't sit and just be comfortable with where you are right now and think, oh, well, this is all I can get. Bullshit. No, it's not. You're just keeping yourself safe. You're just keeping yourself in your comfort zone. That's not where how you get your dreams. That's not how you get your dream life. Trust me, I would not be here if I sat my ass in my comfort zone, because every single day I'm putting myself to the edge, every single day I'm stepping outside my comfort zone, every single day, that is why I get the results I do. And the same with you. You need to make changes. You need to do stuff that is different to what you are doing because what you are doing has got you to where you are today. And if you want to stay there, great, keep doing what you're doing. But you're, you don't, because that's why you're in this. That's why you're listening to this. That's why you're watch, watching me. So instead of sitting on it, go and freaking take some action. You know, um, put into the comments right now, what are you going to take action on? If you're listening to this on the replay, send me a DM and go, oh my God, Tash, I listened to episode 16 of Tash Talks live show. And I'm like, this is what I need to take action on. Like grab life by the balls. If someone said to you, 
go all in. Like if you just went all in and just seen what happened, see what the results were, the outcome that you could get. And you will never, ever, ever regret that ever because you never fail. You, I never fail. I'm always learning. If I fall over, I get myself back up again and again and again and again. I'm like, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. That's how I grow in confidence. That's how I grew my tenacity. That is how I grew my drive and my ambition and my passion for what it is that I've done because I failed so many freaking times. But I never gave up and I keep going and I kept investing. I kept working with my coach and my mentors to be able to help me understand and to learn and to develop and to become the best version of myself. If I don't know something, I'm going to pay to understand it. I'm going to pay for someone to help me. I pay to be in my coach's world for the energy, literally just to hear her speak. Sometimes I don't need to, uh, to answer my questions, but just knowing that I feel supported and that she's got me. Also knowing that I've put myself on the edge as well. I think this is really, really important. So with my love, as always, go and freaking rock today. I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.